health care. It was an issue that the late state representative Peter Cocott followed closely. A new bill is before legislators that would, among other things, work to help community hospitals remain financially viable. Why do some think it's needed? Spiros Hatiris, CEO of Holyoke Medical Center, and Hamden District State Senator Jim Welch filled me in. Well, Representative Cocott um, was the, my co-chair. He was the, the chair of the, the Health Care Finance Committee on the House uh, side. A great person, great legislator, great community person, um, and unfortunately passed away uh, a few months ago. And in his honor, the House of Representatives, the Speaker, and uh, the leadership in the in the House of Representatives decided that it would be fitting to uh, to certainly honor him um, because he did work on the legislation prior to being released um, to honor him and name that legislation or put his name in the legislation, uh, which I think is a great honor. And we'll look at differences in the, the House and Senate sides of the bill in a minute. It hasn't been voted on yet, uh, but the House and Senate had their individual votes and some slight differences in the bill. But I want to bring you into the discussion, Spiros, to talk about uh, you know important things that you wanted legislators to hear as this bill was being considered? You know, was there one or two points that you brought to their attention? I know this is an ongoing discussion. Yes, um, a couple of points are that um, th there is a lot of opposition, I think, to the bill uh, from from various aspects of the in healthcare industry. And I think that it is a bill that is very um, fundamentally changing the way that we pay for healthcare services, or at least it's attempting to do that for the smaller community hospitals. And I think there's some resistance from insurers, and there's a resistance potentially from other healthcare systems that really are not in the same situation as we are. Meaning bigger hospitals, bigger hospitals medical hospitals, centers. Medical centers, you know, uh, systems and so on. And, and I think the message to the legislators is really, you know, um, stay steady on it. You know, it's a very important issue. It is really a life and death situation for smaller hospitals. We really need that bill to pass and, and especially the price variance piece of that bill. So really stay, stay steady on it. Um, look at the facts. Um, ignore the, you know, the rhetoric that, that sometimes comes with these, uh, you know, with these issues uh, and just, just vote a bill for us. When you say price variance, you mean the fact that you've looked at what you're paid, what your uh, medical entity is paid for a given service, say something very common like a colonoscopy or something, that, something that's performed regularly regardless of the medical setting. And you're, you've noticed that there's a difference in the way Holyoke would be paid compared to the other medical facilities, right? Yes, there's a significant difference, not just Holyoke, but let's take Holyoke as an example. What you find is that the smaller community hospitals, especially the ones located in gateway cities, which are uh, not as, as affluent as we are, um, have traditionally been significantly underpaid by private insurers. And there's really no, no justification. In fact, nobody has come up with... Um, you know, with, with any real justification other than those smaller hospitals don't have market clout, the communities don't have as strong a voice as some other communities, and that's wh how we end up getting paid less. Insurers, so, and, uh, and I'll let you finish yeah, in just a second, Insur sure. insurers might say that, you know, larger hospitals have, you know, they're a larger entity, they're serving a bigger population, et cetera. So they give reasons. But in terms of dollars and cents, can you give a specific example of, of what you might be reimbursed sure. for versus another medical center? Sure, I will give you an example. And, you know, I'll say out, out, of, you know, out of the gate that, you know, I love John Marquesi up at uh, Cooley Dick, and Cooley Dick is a great hospital. But I'll take it as an example because we're very close together geographically, about the same size, same kind of uh, infrastructure. And so at Holyoke Medical Center for a simple colonoscopy, and this is public data that people can look up on CHIA, we get paid. Uh, Chia, excuse Chia me. Chia is the is the Center for Health Information Analytics of Massachusetts. It's a it's a center that analyzes data. Essentially, um, for a colonoscopy, for example, which is a simple procedure, outpatient procedure, Holyoke would get paid seventeen hundred dollars. And according to Chia data from Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, Cooley Dickinson would get paid twenty six hundred dollars. Now that's a nine hundred dollar difference per procedure. That's almost a sixty percent difference. And there's actually no reason that we can, you know, come up with why that difference exists. Um, in terms of quality, safety, you know, Cooley Dick and Holyoke, anybody can look the data up. We're very comparable. We're actually, uh, you know, the same, the same kind of provider. Senator, I'm sure this is not the first time you're hearing this information. Uh, when you talk to either insurers or, or larger medical facilities, what are you hearing from them? Well, of course, uh, the argument on the other side, and we had a very long uh, process uh, 
we created a commission, um, price variation uh, commission, to actually uh, come up with, with ways to try and address this issue. It was made up of 23 members from across the state, different CEOs from hospitals and health plans and uh, different industry people to look at why are there such differences, as Spiros had mentioned, and are there any factors that are actually warranted? And we do hear from um, um, health plans, of course, and from, from larger provider systems, and mainly they, they talk about how, you know, they do research at their hospital or they're a teaching hospital, so they have extra added cost that is providing some sort of community benefit or public good, which in their mind should be something that they should get reimbursed for um, with the payment of, of these type of procedures. And so I know that one way this specific bill, and there's many uh, aspects to it, but we're talking about the reimbursement rate at this point. One way that the bill aims to sort of get at that difference is a one-time payment that would come from insurers and these larger hospitals to smaller entities. Um, and I know the House and Senate are looking at this in, in different ways. Uh, specifically from the House bill, it would be about $248 million that would come from insurers, and then about $90 million that would come from the larger hospitals. And um, that would be a one-time fee, as I said. The Senate bill would limit the price differences that insurers pay, um, and then see that no insurer pays kind of too far above or below the statewide average. Do you have a sense of which version of this will come out, or what are the discussions like so far? Well, we haven't had our first discussions. We're meeting uh, the beginning part of next week uh, to begin negotiations. Uh, the House took a, a, a more of a direct short-term approach uh, to address the issue in the market by you know, assessing uh, providers and assessing, uh, assessing um, uh, health plans to help offset the costs and redistribute some of that money to the, to the smaller community hospitals, the lower paid hospitals. In the Senate, we took a more long-term structural approach uh, that would, as you said, um, make sure that, or put in law, that no one, no hospital could be paid under um, what we call the variance or what we call 0.9 percent of of payment in the overall market, meaning if one is 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 the is the average, so to speak, no hospital can be paid less than 0.9 or 90 cents on the on that average. So, um, and put in structural things into place uh, for the future to ensure that the market is living up to that. Uh, our approach um, was designed to let the market. Um, you mean the Senate approach? The when Senate approach, our, yeah. yes. I'm sorry. The, no, Sen no, no. <laughs> the Senate approach was designed to let the market kind of deal with itself and correct itself and, and, and bring community hospitals up, but at the same time put in something that's long-term to ensure that it continues to happen. For your perspective, House, Senate, do you see one bill as, as serving your needs a little better? Well, I will say this. First of all, I want to thank uh, Senator Welch and, and, and his efforts because really the Senate started this, uh, this, this dialogue, so to speak, and, and the House has followed with the bill. I think from my perspective, the immediate relief of, 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 of the financial you know, difficulties that we have because of this underpayment is certainly attractive. But I would agree with the Senator that you know, it is important that we put a permanent fix into this you know, and not just a one-time um, approach. I mean, I, I appreciate, I think the House has done an amazing job with coming up with a different way of approaching this, uh, the problem. But it seems like you're going to have that problem again after, you know, two, three years, however long that, that price would be worked out over. And, and this is our, our hope is that in conference committee, you know, we can kind of come together between the two, the, the two bodies and come up with something that not only fixes it, quickly, but also uh, has a lasting effect. Last question here quickly. I know that there's a lot on the agenda for the legislature. Uh, there's not quite a budget yet. There, there's a temporary sustainability. The, 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 there's a $5 billion fix sort of that gets you through the next month. Any sense of when this will be taken up? Uh, the health care bill? Yes, health care Well, the hope, obviously, our legislative session ends July 31st. Our hope would be to have it done a week or 10 days prior to that um, to hopefully have something on the governor's desk for his approval uh, before we break for legislative session on July 31st. Well, great. Senator, Mr. Hattiris, thanks for coming in today. Thank you.